Well, welcome back, folks. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. Over recent months, I've been asked by a number of different viewers if I have either photos or preferably video of my entire restored bike collection all together, and the answer until recently has been no. I've really never uh, had the opportunity to get them out until recently. So we've had some very nice, warm, sunny days uh, this last week or so, so I got the bikes all out, lined them up in order of their restoration and shot some still photos as well as some brief video where I talk about each of the projects and I do show them all lined up together in front of my, my shop. And that's really what this video is going to be about. This also allows me to clean the space in the shop where I keep the bikes stored. They all haven't been out at the same time in years. Uh, as well as get them out for the video work. However, I'm going to start the, uh, the actual video here with a um, still shot of each of the bikes as I originally received them or as bought. Just a little clip, so there'll be six photos in a row in order of the restoration. Uh, some of these clips, and in fact, most of these bikes, if you've been with me for any length of time, you've probably have seen before. But I thought it would be helpful for some folks to see the as-bought condition before we got into the video. One last comment I like to make is invariably when I do this type of video or a profile or review one of my restorations, someone will ask me, sometimes more than one person will ask me if the project or projects are for sale. I know they're not. I didn't restore them to sell. Uh, I'll never be able to get my money back out of most of these projects with maybe the exception of the uh, Kawasaki H2A, that bike I could probably get my money back, but the rest of them I have far more money in them than what most people would be willing to pay. And I didn't restore them to sell anyway, so uh, just want to make that point that you, know, you don't need to ask me if they're for sale because they're not. So let's go ahead and get on with the review. A little windy today, it's the middle of the day, and I wanted to get them out in the sunshine, so you're going to have to dare w bear with me. And this is also on a handheld camera, so we might have a little bit of unsteadiness, but again, you're just going to have to tolerate that. I've got them lined up in the order they were restored, from left to right. So over here on the left, we've got a 73 Kawasaki H2 750 triple. Completed that restoration about 10 years ago or so now. That was my very first one. 71 Honda SL70. Second bike I restored right after the triple. And these are really in descending order. Uh, the 1973 uh, Suzuki TS185 in the middle here. 72 Kawasaki G5100. A 66, 1966 Yamaha YL1, and then a 1971 Honda SL125. Right, I do a little walk along here and talk about each one briefly. 73 Kawasaki H2A Triple originally was gold when I bought it in northern Indiana. Uh, I checked with Rick Brett, the renowned Kawasaki Triple expert, and he said you could paint it in either color model your color. It came in those two colors that it is a purple and a gold. He said uh, Kawasaki did not track serial numbers and colors so paint it whichever one I preferred and it would be fine and I preferred the purple. That was not a difficult motorcycle to restore. I could get a lot of parts for it but you know there's a lot of everything because it's three cylinders. Second bike I did the 71 Honda SL70. I bought that in mid-Ohio. It was a rolling basket case. It originally was red. I repainted it obviously in red because I preferred that color. The 1973 Suzuki TS185. I bought that in northern Michigan. In fact, I bought two bikes at the same time. 71 and then the 73. The 71 was a parts bike which I sold on after I completed this restoration. That was a fairly difficult bike to get parts for, believe it or not. I was not expecting that, but there were a few pieces I had difficulty in sorting. That uh, was the second most difficult bike to restore. Um, the first was a YL1. 
primarily because of parts. 72 Kawasaki G5 100. I never owned one of these either. In fact, I never owned any of these bikes originally. Uh, I had a friend in high school that had one of these, so I remembered it from the day. Uh, I bought this at Mid-Ohio. Uh, it was a rolling basket case, and it came from the U.S. state of Alabama. 66 Yamaha YL1 uh, came from about 40 miles away from me. So I believe it was a Michigan bike all along. It did have a sticker on the fender from the early 70s from one of the local colleges, a parking permit. Uh, it was intact, but again, a rolling basket case when I got it. And of course, the 1971 Honda SL125, the last bike I have completely restored. That also was a Michigan bike. Um, it's originally from about 75 miles away from me or so. Uh, and was a complete basket case. Engine was completely locked up. In fact, most of these, I think, with the one or two exceptions, the engines were locked up. And uh, I, also the owner I bought it from was an acquaintance of mine, uh, just happenstance. I did not know he had this bike until I talked to him and discovered that. I've been looking for one of these for years. All of them do run. They're all dry right now in terms of fuel. I do not store any of my projects with fuel in them, so they all do run. Uh, and I also remove the batteries when they're stored. They get run uh, every year or two. I prefer to run them yearly, but that doesn't always work because I have to fuel them up and get the batteries in them and you know go through the whole nine yards. But they all do run. And in fact, uh, the, the YL1 and the SL70 I've ridden within the last couple of months. The rest of them have not been run this year and they'll probably get run next year. So that's my bike collection, my restoration collection right now. I do have other bikes, other riders that uh, are not part of this video. They're survivors that I ride around the yard. Kawasaki F11, Kawasaki F6, uh, let's see what else do I got. Yamaha RD350. That's going to be it for this video today, folks. Any issues, questions, thoughts, drop me a note. Otherwise, as usual, thanks for watching.